Hello, my name is Tina and today I'm gonna show you my new battery angel grinder from Banggood. They shipped it to DHL so I got it in 3 days to Europe. The case is made out of thin plastic but it's just ok to carry grinder around. Case included Chinese manual, handle, angel grinder, 3 piece of cutting disc, lithium ion battery pack, battery charger, disc shield and the cave for disc mount. Everything come a bit messy into a case because of shipping, but there's a design place for every piece into a case. If we're looking for cordless angle grinder on Banggood we found a lot of different types. Someone with option to choose between single or dual battery pack, but I chose this one, because the price is a bit higher. I still think that the price is some kind of quality indicator. But the biggest factor to choose this model is information that this model using 125mm disc, which is the standard to Europe. Almost every other one uses 100mm disc, which can be bought in local shop here in Europe. But when I got them I instantly realized that it's just a description error, but more about this later. Firstly I mount the shield and disc on the grinder and then start them just to see that it works. Second thing I do is to put battery onto charger and disassemble the grinder, so let's take a look what's inside of the housing. Housing is nicely made out of two components, rubber is injected to a plastic housing really precise and the housing itself is thick and strong. Then we got here a brushless motor, stator looks really robust and the copper wires are precisely wound. And also on the back side the main wires are nicely managed and glued so they can get close to the spinning rotor. Pinion on the rotor look nicely machined, rotor spin nicely and it is balanced, we can see that by the holes on the rotor. And there's a head, nothing special about, it's nicely machined and running good. There's a switch, just basic solid switch, good thing there is that only one pole is used, so if the switch die we can just move wires to the other pole and we are back in game. Below the electronic is battery terminal. Complete electronic is glued into aluminium housing, which block all the metal dust to come into, and also prevent heating, but we can do nothing with them if it's die. There's also one connector not plugged, probably for motor terminal protection or something. And there's also integrated button for setting RPM and 6 LEDs. 3 of them is for battery level indicator and 3 is for indicate RPM setting. There's one tiny fail, look like the indicator stickers is from some other model and got a different layout of LED. Plastic is ok, so I just remove the stickers, scratch them and draw new lines with the black marker from behind. Charger got about 30W of power, it can give 2A, but depend on the battery voltage. I measure almost fully battery and measured 1.4A on 20V. Ok, let's check the battery now. I can get the information about the battery voltage and capacity, so I open them and see that. It's clear there are 10 cells into battery pack, they're connected in 5S2P pack, it means that 2 cells are connected parallel and then 5 pair connected in serial connection. Single ion cell got about 3.7 volts and 2000 milliamp hour of capacity. So the entire pack got about 18 volts depend on the charge level and 4000 milliamp of capacity, that's pretty cool. But I want to check battery a bit more, so I remove the battery protection circuit. Circuit is nicely made, good soldering contact and also got lockware protection over them, so the steel dust can damage it. This circuit got over charge protection, over discharge protection, shortcut protection and temperature protection. But beside all of these protections got also balancing function, so we can charge this battery with any 20 volts adapter through the port on that circuit. Before I take off the circuit I also check the voltage on each cell, when it's fully charged. Look like the balancing work good, cells are from 4.14V to 4.15V, that's just 10mV of difference. Then I sold the wires for balancing on the battery pack so I can charge and discharge with better charger, and check the capacity and inner resistance. 
When the battery pack was plugged into i charger, I set to discharge it with 10 amp current and voltage limit set to 32 volts. On the end it stopped discharging because of capacity limit. It discharged for a 3060 mA but the unloaded cell still got almost 3.5 volts, so the capacity is truly 4000 mA. Empty battery got maximum 10 mV difference between cells. That's because of different inner resistance, the cell doesn't match, but it's too much to expect for that price. Then I charge back with a 3 amp current. It's fully charged in a good hour. And here you can see the capacity, voltage and resistance value. Let's get back to grinder now. As you see it's pretty good quality, but the main problem for me is 100mm disc size limit. I want to use 125mm disc, because I can buy them everywhere. So before I make any test, I'll convert this grinder to 125mm disc. Even if I remove the small shield, I can mount a bigger disc, because it's got a bigger center hole. I'll try to use a nut from other grinder, but it don't fit because they got M14 treat, but the battery grinder got M10 treat nut to mount the disc. But I got more luck with the 125mm shield. I bought one as a spare part from Makita for a few bucks, and guess what, it fit perfect. So all I must do is to take some measurements, draw the sketches and make a new nut. I must make something between these two mounting nuts, so I take a piece of steel and start my mini lathe. Firstly I make a washer with 10mm hole and 22mm edge for centering cutting disc, and then make a nut with 10mm treat. I make them just like original ones, so on one side it got 22mm groove and on the other side got 22mm edge, so I can use them for thick or thin disc. After about half an hour I got finished washer and nut, but I make also anti-corrosion protection with heat and lensit oil. And this is the final result. Of course I didn't forget to hose 4K. Now I got everything I need to mount 125mm disc on it. And that's how the finished result look like. It's also running pretty nice. Before I start to cutting I'll just check the current to see the power of the grinder. I insert watt meter between the grinder and battery and got the following result. By the way, this grinder got very short soft start, so it's not annoying to wait and it still prevent big starting current. We can see there that the power consumption of non-loaded grinder at stage 3 full RPM is about 200 watts for more than 10 amp on 20 volts. At second stage it got about 100 watt power consumption. And on stage 1, lowest RPM, it got about 50 watt or just 2.5 amp. I also tried to measure the final working power of the grinder but I got two thin cables for that job. It come to maximum 500 watts, and then the protection circuit into the grinder cut off because of the voltage drop. I got one meter long cable so you can see there that the voltage drop for about 3 volts on 500 watts, so protect is detected load battery and cut off the motor. Ok, I fully charged the battery again and make a test how much time will last the battery. I start cutting 60 by 10 mm steel profile, but attention, I use 125 by 1 mm cutting disc. I almost cut the fourth piece away when the grinder stops, but I know that the battery isn't dry yet. I wait a bit of time and continue cutting until it stops again, but I continue cutting until the battery wasn't empty, so the battery indicator start blinking and the grinder just try to start. On the end I make exactly 10 cuts of 60 by 10 mm profile. I need about a minute for each cut, so the battery released about 10 minutes at full power all the time, if the battery protection all of this. As I said, the grinder stopped working few times during the torture test. It's because of temperature protection into the battery. The circuit cut off the battery so entire grinder stay without power until the battery cool down. When the battery was empty I instantly opened them and checked the temperature. The Celsius heat up to about 62 degrees Celsius, and the circuit got about 40 degree. But what about the grinder? The most hot was the head, which is normal, but I didn't even open the motor because housing was totally cold, and also this grinder got very powerful ventilation system to cool down the motor. Before I put battery to a charger I measured the voltage of each cell. 
cutoff voltage is about 16.5 or 3.3 volt per unloaded cell. Charger can charge with 2 amp current, so 4000 mAh battery will charge in about 2 hours. But the charger need about 3 hours to turn on the green light. That's because charger don't got the balancing function, so the battery must do that job slowly. Battery is almost fully charged after 2 hours, but time to time leave it on charger so they can balance itself. Battery is fully charged again, so I can measure RPM of non-loaded disc. Stage 1 got about 3800 RPM. Stage 2 got about 5900 RPM and Stage 3 got about 8000 RPM. Now I make one more last torture test. I put 2mm cutting disc on it so the force will be bigger. Then I try to cut and stop the grinder. That's it. I don't doubt in that 800 watts of power at all. I must have pushed really hard and still don't stop them. The current limit protection was faster. I try also grinding disc. It grinds nicely on third or second stage. One more great function is that if I running on the first stage when the power is low, the grinder keeps constant RPM itself when the disc is loaded. For the end I got another great information. I was wondering where can I bought another battery for that grinder. Then I remembered that I got one pure old Makita battery into drawer. And I instantly figured out that they are totally the same. Battery fits and works perfect on the grinder. So yes, battery is the same. I just don't mix charger between because Makita battery got also balancing port on it. And also got a tunnel for cooling air through the battery pack while charging. Makita battery look much better from every perspective, but hey, it cost almost that much like entire grinder with a battery and charger. I got 3 different engine grinder, and here you can see that the battery one got the skinniest body, which is great to hold it with a single hand. This is one old black and decker grinder with fat body, 710 watts of power and can use only 115mm disc, its weight almost 2 kilo. Then I got some better pearless grinder, with 710 watt and skinny body design. That one is the most used grinder from me, it's weight more than 2 kilo. And then there's a battery grinder, it's got far the best body shape to hold it with a single hand. It's got 800 watts of power which I don't doubt and weight less than a 2 kilo, with a battery. Ok, it weighs a bit more if you use Makita battery. That's pretty much it, what can I say for the end? Another good product from a Banggood. Of course we can't compare them to Makita or Milwalk or something, because this one is about 5 times cheaper. I got price always in my mind when testing some products, and try to be honest, I can't expect same result from $130 or $600 grinder. And also I don't use this grinder for some serious cutting. If I got a steel project I definitely take a cable and use a basic grinder. I'll use this one just to cut some screw or two, or as a lifesaver into forest to cut some steel rope. I see a lot of potential use in it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.